DJ Ferris. Chicago, nigga. It's the real one. He back. Only one is pulling shit. Fuck up. Let's get a sports talk. Day as the Philadelphia 76ers were swept out of the playoffs by their arch rivals was indeed the end of this era of Sixers basketball. There's only one reasonable conclusion to draw. The process was a disaster. There were so many reasons. I'd love to tell you the strategy itself didn't work, that tanking is a bad idea, and boy, did they ever tank. Over a three-year stretch, they went 47 and 199. They lost 25 consecutive games twice. So they humiliated themselves, and for what? See, that's where it really went wrong. The strategy wasn't their biggest problem. It was the execution. They took Jalil Okafor, number three, in 2015, one spot ahead of Kristaps Porzingis. You see, you see, it's they drafting. Why would you draft Okafor? And you already know Embiid was going to be your primary center going forward. That you shouldn't have took. That's the same they did with Markel Folks. They know Ben Simmons is going to be the point guard moving forward. Why would you draft him? Why would y'all draft two guys and y'all already know y'all had the two main guys that y'all want to build the franchise around? That's their fault. And then y'all had a chance to get Pazinkas. Pazinkas with Embiid and Simmons would have been good. But they went ahead and took Okafor at the same position as Embiid. And they ain't need Okafor. They traded two number ones to Boston to draft Markel Fultz, who had more DNPs than he did made field goals as a sixer. Meanwhile, the Celtics used that trade to draft Jason Tatum two spots after Fultz. Tatum scored 108 points this week in sweeping Philly out of the playoffs. But Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons are what remain of the process. Together, they've won 10 playoff games and missed 383 games, which is a shame, really, because no one could argue they were bad picks. They're both all-star caliber players. But between Embiid's health and Simmons' offensive limitations, it seems they may have gone about as far as they're ever going to. So maybe that's it. Maybe it's over. And if so, the moral of the story is this. The process was designed to revolutionize the sport. Instead... It became a cautionary tale that hopefully will keep any team from ever trying it again. That's what I think. Let me find out what Richard Jefferson thinks. RJ, how would you assess it? When you pay Tobias Harris a hundred something to be that third guy, he needs to step up in the playoffs. You pay Al Horford the same amount. He had to step in the playoffs. Yes, Ben Simmons got hurt. That would hurt them. But you had Tobias Harris, who's a solid player, Al Horford, who's a solid player, to step up. Richardson, step up. The process is not over. You know what their downfall was? Last year, they had floor spacing. This season, it wasn't no floor spacing. That's the difference. They really ain't had no closers like they had last year with and Jimmy Butler. That's what they missing. Floor spacing. State of the process after the Sixers get bounced out this quickly. Well, well, first of all, let me say this. That was well said. And there were multiple picks also in there when we talk about Noel, when we talk about multiple guys, Saric, that they also drafted that, you know, are ultimately players, but it wasn't worth everything that they went through for multiple years. Uh, you know what? I, I really think that this team, it's, I, I hate to say this again, but Jimmy Butler was the key to this team. If you have Jimmy Butler, you have Tobias Harris, you have your late game closer, you have your perimeter defender, that was the piece. And when they lost that, it, it, became, it, it, it kind of went in a little bit of disarray. They added Al Horford. You see what happened when you had no closer on no guy you could go to at the end of the games? And you don't have no floor facing uh, spacing. Everything is closed in, and you see Simmons don't shoot outside, and B shoot outside, but he mainly sometimes like to be in the paint. But everything gonna be closed in because you don't have no spacing to open up everything for those two guys. Which 
in, in theory, like you said, in theory, it should work, right? Because you have two bigs that can now shoot the ball and it allowed Ben Simmons. But Al Horford was not nearly the same player that he has been for the last few years because he's older. Ben Simmons hasn't been able to stay healthy. Joel Embiid had a very good season, but it just wasn't enough. So, yes, should they retool this team? Definitely. Are they going to be able to get off of the Al Horford contract or the Tobias Harris contract? Most likely not. So then your only really true paid trade pieces are either Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid. And I'm not sure which one you go with. You know, if you would have said a year and a half ago, it would have been Ben Simmons. Now, today, you're like, well, Ben Simmons is having trouble staying healthy. We're talking about knee. We're talking about back. We're talking about other issues. So, you know, it, now it's a toss up at which one you really want to build your team around. So, so Jalen, from the day we started this thing, has been saying he does not believe Embiid and Simmons will ever work. They just aren't players whose skills work together. I had Jackie Mack on earlier, and she said that, that if she were making the decision, she would change the coaching staff and, and see if a different coach can find a way to make it work together. Do you believe that a, a, a new coach, and, and it seems a... Yes. I, I feel like that. You don't get rid of Embiid and Ben Simmons. I feel like Ben Simmons is going to be the same guy once he come back because he going to have the time off to get ready for the next season. That's all you need is a new coaching staff. Brent Brown was a solid coach for seven years for them. He was with them with the bad times and the good times. But a new voice in that locker room will have a big change on them. A, 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 a coach that know how to use lies and be in Simmons to make it work. Figure out something to get this process working. Certainty that they will make a coaching change there. Do you believe a new coach can figure something out? And if so, do you have anyone in mind? Well, look, I, I will say this. I think Brett Brown is a great coach in this league, and I think he should, if he is released, I think he should get another coaching opportunity because he's been a part of this crazy, crazy mess. That being said, uh, you should give them one more year because you don't want to just give up on, on two 25-year-old all-stars. You don't want to give up on that. So if you're like, hey, let's try the, a different voice, and then ultimately the next. If you give up on them and say if they trade both of them, that means you had to go back down and build this team back up to where they at now making the playoffs. And I don't think uh, the Sixers don't want to do that. They've been saying trust in that process for years. And once the process came, came along and got them to the playoffs, I don't think they want to ball their paper and throw it away just yet. You don't want to give up on your all-stars. You want to figure out a way to – get this team back to where it was. What they need to do is figure out how to get a team like it was last year. Get you a closer and a perimeter defender and get some spacing around Ben Simmons and B, and it could work. The last year you've seen it was working. You can't say it wasn't working. you say saying that now because that spacing closed in. Next time, what you do is you're like, okay, even with a different voice, it didn't work. Let's figure out which play. But I think you should try and trade the change the coach before abandoning two all stars. And there are so many great names out there that 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 can be, you know, again, T. Lou. Um, you know, there's lots of other coaches, Jamal Mosley uh, in uh, in Dallas, who, who's done a great job with that team there. Uh, there's just a lot of coaches out there. You know, even you know ESPN's own Mark Jackson, Van Gundy. These guys are all. Names. Thank you for watching ESPN.